let's talk about the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, and so forth up to infinity. But wait a minute, what does that mean? How many natural numbers are there? We know there are more than in a three element set and even more than the set of all multiples of 10 up to 10 to the hundredth power, but how big is the set of natural numbers? With finite sets, we can just count the elements and get a number, but it's not that simple for infinite sets. We need a different way to compare their sizes, so we'll use something called a bijection. A bijection is just a way we can pair up elements between sets. If you can pair up each element in one set to one in the other and vice versa, then the sets have the same size. Otherwise, there's stuff left over and one set is bigger than the other. This should work for infinite sets too, so let's try an example. The natural numbers can be separated into evens and odds, and as we would expect, the evens are just as big as the odds. We can see this by pairing each even number with the odd number one more than it. Nothing is left behind, so this is a bijection, and thus the two sets have the same size. Let's try something else. This time, let's compare the natural numbers to the even numbers. Although the even numbers are a subset of the natural numbers, they have the same size since we compare each natural number with twice that number. This might seem a little bit odd, but it's true. So far we've been working with the natural numbers, but if we add on all the negative numbers, we'll get the integers, which we call z. Despite the fact that n is a subset of z, we have to wonder, can we find a bijection between the natural numbers and the integers? It turns out that we can. By ordering the integers so that they alternate between positive and negative, we can pair them up with the natural numbers. Therefore, n and z actually have the same size. Just to make things easier, let's introduce some terminology. If a set has the same size as n, we'll say that it is countable. Our examples so far have shown that the even numbers n and z are all countable sets, but there might be even more. Now, what about the rational numbers? These are all the numbers we get by taking fractions of integers, like 1 half, 3 fourths, or 37 under 9, for example. The difference with the rational numbers is that they're dense. Between any two rationals, you can always find another one. This bizarre property might lead you to believe that the rationals are uncountable, but they are still the same size as the natural numbers. To see this, we start by writing all the rational numbers in an infinite grid. Every rational number is in here somewhere, and we just have to find a way to order the rational numbers so that they can be counted. We can accomplish this by starting in the corner and zigzagging our way through the grid, and this establishes a way to count the rationals. We'll run into some repeats along the way, but we can just toss these out and the ordering still works, so the rationals are countable. Now, we still haven't seen any uncountable sets yet, so let, let's build one. Let S be the set which contains every infinite sequence of zeros and ones. And I mean every infinite sequence. The sequence of all zeros is in here, the sequence of all ones is in here, and any other combination you can think of is in S, and we want to prove that S is uncountable. To do this, we'll use something called Cantor's diagonalization argument, and suppose that S is countable. That is, we can order its elements in some fashion. It doesn't really matter what the ordering is, so we'll just write down an example. Keep in mind that each of these sequences is infinite. The dot 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 after the first few numbers doesn't mean that it repeats, so anything could follow. Now that we have some ordering, consider the sequence formed by the diagonal, and notice that it's also an element of s. Now flip the numbers so that 0 is 1 and 1 is 0, and we get a sequence which has at least one position which is different from every other sequence in the ordering, but we claim that every element of s is in here, and this is definitely an element of s. Thus we have a contradiction, and s is uncountable. So now we know there is at least one uncountable set, and it turns out that the real numbers are also uncountable. But is there anything even bigger? If we go back to n, the natural numbers, we can create its power set p of n by forming the set which contains all subsets of n. If we applied Cantor's diagonalization argument again, we'd see that p of n is also uncountable. In fact, taking the power set always results in a bigger set than the original. Now, we haven't really answered the question that we started with, which was how big are the natural numbers, but we've uncovered something even better. Because we can always take the power set, there have to be infinitely many sizes of infinity. Pretty cool, huh?